We mentioned that this surah is one of the surahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his blessings to mankind and to all the creatures. And we mentioned that this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started it with the rahmah, ar-rahman, to talk about his mercy to all the creatures. Then the, right after this, one of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah started to count some of the blessings that he gave us. The first blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ilm. Allam al-Quran. Talks about the importance of learning and knowledge. The second blessing is Quran. Quran is one of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentioned about creation of human being, khalaq al-insan. And we mentioned the process of human being's creation. How do we go through? And how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala process the creation of human being? And that is number three. Number four, then Allah talks about allamahu al-bayan. That ya Allah, Allah is talking to us that in this Quran, Allah mentions some of the blessings that He gave to human beings, mankind, and especially Al Bayan. In Tafsir, some of the scholars they say Allamahu Al Bayan is not just speaking and talking, which is one of the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Anyway, but it's not just speaking. Also Al Bayan bi ma'na Al Kitab that we express ourselves through writings. Allahu Akbar. When you look at some of the animals or some of the creatures of Allah, not only they cannot talk, they cannot even write. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these blessings 
that not only we can talk to express ourselves, we can also write to express our feelings and our thoughts. And that is one of the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on top of that is the ni'matul kalam, the blessing of speaking. That is also one of the blessings. And Imam Ali alayhi salam mentioned about the blessing of speaking. He said, لِبْنِ Adam فَضِيلَتَان Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave mankind two blessings <coughs> where Allah did not give to any other creatures. Number one, he said, نِعْمَةُ الْعَقْلِ وَنِعْمَةُ الْمَنْطِقِ الْمَنْطِقِ means Allah gave a human being the blessing of speaking. And then he says, فَبِالْمَنْطِقِ يُفِيدَ With speaking, others, the listeners, they get to benefit. They get to know what his feeling is for. وَبِالْعَقْلِ يُفِيدَ يَا يَوْبُ الْعَقْلِ يَسْتَفِيدَ يُفِيدُ وَيَسْتَفِيدُ بِالْمَنْطِقِ يُفِيدُ وَبِالْعَقْلِ يَسْتَفِيدُ With the aql, with the intellect, he got to benefit. But with the mantap, he gets to benefit others. Allahu Akbar. And I think I mentioned that in Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the importance of mantap and speech. That in Surah Yusuf, when Yusuf was brought as a slave, Yusuf is a prophet, but nobody knows him. Yusuf came and everybody was looking at him as a slave. But Allahu Akbar, when he opened his mouth, as soon as he started to speak, the king, Al-Aziz, he realized the position of Yusuf alayhi salam. And he said, in Surah Yusuf, فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ As soon as he heard Yusuf and his wisdom and the way he was speaking, Yusuf alayhi salam, was immediately told by the king that you are now to be key to care to be kept because of your wisdom that is the benefit of manta that is one of the blessings of speaking now right after that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the next blessing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say ash-shamsu wal qamaru bi husban allahu akbar most of the time in the quran when Allah mentioned a shams, you see al qamar next to it. Most of the places in the Quran, they always go together. For example, Allah SWT said, wa shamsi wa duaha, wa al qamari idha tala. Allahu Akbar. A shams, immediately then kamar comes after that. Another ayah Allah SWT spoke about these two is this ayah. A shamsu wa al qamaru bi husban. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another ayah وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ As soon as he continued, then the ayah mentioned الْقَمَرُ وَالْشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالْدَّوَابِ وَالنَّاسِ and so on and so on. But Allah mentioned الشمس والقمر together. Tonight I want us to open our hearts and listen some of the blessing of shams and qamar. See number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first he mentioned two blessings in this surah. The first one is the ni'mat al khalq is yourself, your creation itself is a blessing. That's one. Number two, now Allah wants to talk about some of the blessings outside you. When you human being, you get to benefit from those things. Now the first, those blessings are shams. What is the blessing of some shams? Number one, for your own body, for your own body, that the sun comes out, that you walk in and out. You know, one of the blessings, one of the benefits your body gets from the sun is called vitamin D. Allahu Akbar. You just walking out. You don't have to do anything. Just to be exposed to the sun, your body gets to what? To this vitamin that your body needs in order to function properly. Allahu Akbar. Na'matul ash-shams. That's number one. Number two. The blessing of Shams, just the sun. Your food that you eat. If Allah didn't create the sun, 
Allah, you and I will die of hunger. Why? Because every food that we we have, every plant, they cannot survive without the sun. Now you plant something in your house, in your room, where it doesn't get exposed to the sun. What happened to it? Immediately it will die. Why? Because every tree, every every food, they need to be exposed to what? To the sun. When the sun comes and they're exposed to it, they grow properly and they give their benefit to human beings. That's number two. Number three. Allahu Akbar. One of the blessings and the benefit of sun. The rotation of these two, as shams wal kamar, their rotation is the blessing of you knowing to count. You count one month, one week, one year. How do you know to count day and night? How do you know to count years and birthdays and weekends? You know to count with the rotation of the sun and the moon. And Allah mentioned in the Quran. In one of the ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ ضِيَاءً وَالْقَمَرَ نُورًا And then he continues, he said, لِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ Allah said, I created sun and moon. The rotation of them, Allah said, it happened, they rotated one after the other so that you and I can tell. It's a one day, it's a week, it's a month. So you know to count how many years you live. Allahu Akbar. And you know what, brothers and sisters, to know the importance of counting. You know, Ashab al-Kahf. Ashab al-Kahf. When Allah SWT talks about them in Surah al-Kahf, a lot of people to tell us the importance of counting of days and years. Allah SWT says, Allahu Akbar. Allah turned to, to know just the importance of counting days and years. Allah said, the reason why we brought Ashab al Kaf back to life, one of the hikmah is to see who is accurate in counting. Counting of what? Counting of years and months. Because Counting is one of the important things in life, brothers and sisters. And you cannot know the counting of a week or days unless the rotation of the sun and moon continues, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. That's number three. Number four, to understand the benefit of sun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the sun, the rotation of it day and night, is what gives you two blessings, two main blessings. One of them is what? It's for your own body, which is sleeping. This is Surah Al Naba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wajalna layla libasa, lay night, which is for kamar. That's the time that the, the moon comes. At that time, Allah said, Wajalna layl. We created the night. Libasan ayraha, a term of what resting. And not just you and I alone. All the animals, look at the birds. In the morning, you see them, they're flying from one place to another to go and search for daily bread. But at night, what do you see them? In the evening, you see them, they're flying back to go to their nest. Why? Because they want to go and sleep. And this sleeping is so important, brothers and sisters. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. How is it important? Allah created at night for you to rest. And this rest, even Allah, Allah values the night and the resting time. That is why Allah never punish people at night. When people are sleeping, unfortunately today, the enemies of one another, when they attack each other, they always attack one at night. Right? Yeah. But Allah, Allah does not allow anyone to attack one another, especially at the night. That is why when Allah sent prophet, uh, the angels to go and destroy the people of Lut, listen to the Quran. They passed by Ibrahim al Khalil alayhi salam. Ibrahim al Khalil asked them where they were going. He said, Inna ursilna ila qawmi Lut. We were sent to prophet to, to the people of Lut. Right? 
to do what? To destroy them. Then Ibrahim said, Inna fiha lota. There's a lot in him, in that, in that city. <coughs> then the angels responded, Nahnu a'lamu biman fiha. You want to tell us who is that? Ya Ibrahim, Nahnu a'lamu, we know who is that. Lanu najiyannahu wa'ala. We will rescue him and his people. And then the ayah continues, Inna mawa'idahumu subah. Alaysa subahu bi qareeb. The angels, they told Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, we are not going to destroy them at night. The time that Allah gave us to destroy them is in the morning. The night, let them sleep. Allahu Akbar. Not attacking them at night. That is number one. Number two, even when you go to Hajj, you are in the state of the Haram. You are not allowed to hunt. Right? <coughs> when you hunt, when you are in the state of the Haram, the kafara is different. If you hunt during the daytime, your kafara is different. If you hunt at the time or at the night when the animals are sleeping, they're resting and you attack them, the kafara is double. Why? Because you interrupted the resting time of those animals. So Allah says, for interrupting their sleep, you have to be punished twice. That's the importance of night. That Allah made this night to become of what? The time of sleeping. And another ayah, Allah ja'ala lakum al-layla wal-nahar litaskunu ilayha. To have peace and calm at night. But you know what? Unfortunately, we especially, now, we reverse it. Allah said in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا وَالنَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا Now come to us. We, we made it. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ لِبَاسًا وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ مَعَاشًا At night, mashaAllah, you see people running from one place. Where are you going? I'm going to jail. Allah. What do you do during do the day time? I'm sleeping. Allah created the system and he tells you that this is how the system works. The daytime is what? Is to go and search for the bread. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارْ مَعَاشْ To search for your daily bread. And that is why they say this is, has nothing to do with the, with the Islam or anything. Just researchers. You know what they said? I was sleeping at night. If a person sleep at night just for one hour, one hour is better than the hours of sleeping during the daytime. Allahu Akbar. There is a secret in that night that Allah created. And when you go to sleep, Allah SWT said, at night, they say every part of your body get to rest the way it moves. <coughs> but during the daytime, no, the body doesn't get that rest. That is one of the benefits of a rotation of the day and night. But what is more important? about the day and night and the rotation of the sun and moon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified a time at night for what? for communicating with him in most of us all night is for sleeping all night is what? as for us to sleep and rest but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifies certain time during the night time to be a time to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's mentioned about, about this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَبِاللَّيْلِ وَبِالْأَسْحَارِ هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Ashar is the close to the Fajr time. Suhoor. That is the best time to communicate with Allah. And Allah told the Prophet also in Surah Al-Muzammil, يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُزَمِّلْ كُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا Kalina nisfahu awin kusminhu kalilan. Right? That's the Prophet Allah telling him. And then generally speaking to all of us, Allah said in the Quran, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ أَسَى أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا You want a high position in the sight of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, make a use of night. At night, when the night comes, it's the best time to communicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have said in the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the night comes, Allah calls. Who will call me at this moment? Man yadu'uni fa'ujibu. Anytime you can call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are certain times Allah made it priority. 
That those times, if you call upon Allah, you are most likely to be heard by Allah or to be accepted more than any other time. And that is why Allah told the Prophet, Come in layl. Layl, especially at night. Allah told Ibrahim al Khalil, Ya Ibrahim, Kadaba man za'ama annahu yuhibbuni. Wa idha janna layl nama anni. You call yourself, Ya Allah, Allah, I'm a good mu'min, or you're not. If the night comes, and you and I, mashallah, we sleep in. Allah told Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, Alaysa kullu habibin bi habibihi yakhtali idha janna layl. All of us with our families and wives and husbands, during the daytime we rush to work, but the night we come spend time together. Allah said, Ibrahim, if you want, if you want to be a true believer, he said, the night is the time to communicate with me. And Ibrahim al-Khalil was asked in one of the hadith, Ya Ibrahim, How did you get to this level? And you know Ibrahim al-Khalil is not a joke. In the Quran, when Allah describes him, in one ayah, Allah said, Kana Ibrahim umma. And he's the, a lot of the, a lot of verses in the Quran was mentioned about Ibrahim al Khalil. When they ask Ibrahim, Kafir, how did you get to this level? Then Allah calls him in the Quran, Khalilan wa Allahu Ibrahim al Khalil. How did you become that? Ibrahim al Khalil answered, he said, Bishayain. Number one, Salat al Layl. Salat al Layl? Yes. They say, when you wake up at night and you communicate with Allah and you talk to Allah, Ibrahim al Khalil said one of the things that got me to that higher level. In the same ayah, Allah said, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَا أَسَى أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامٍ That is one of the benefits of what? Of the sun. Number two, Allah said, وَالْقَمَرْ That's another benefit. Al Qamar, the moon. One of the benefits of moon, Allahu Akbar. When you go to fit, one of the benefits of moon, there is mustahab to fast every Thursday and every Mondays. That's mustahab. But there is a special day is mentioned in fit. It's three days in a month. One is called 13th and 14th and 15th of every month. And the fiqh is called Ayyamul Biyad. Ayyamul Biyad meaning the time where the moon becomes full. Those are the three days. 13th and 14th and 15th. Those days are even higher recommended for one to fast. And how do you get to know that 13th and 14th and 15th? They say when the moon becomes complete. That's one of the benefits of moon. Number two, one of the benefits of moon is that moon Allah Akbar, especially in those days, 13 and 14 and 15. Today you and I, we live in this part of the country. We might not recognize the importance of moon. Now go to the village. Most of the villages, where they don't have this type of electricity. You know when they do their gatherings, their weddings? During the 13th and 14 and 15. Because the moon is more brighter. So if they have any party or any gathering, what they do is that they wait or they put it until those days because they can benefit from the moon more and more than any other time. Allahu Akbar. That is the benefit of moon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said these two things. Ash-shamsu wal qamaru bihusban. Allah said all these two blessings. Allah said they are all active in a very planned system. Mahsub. Allahu Akbar. How is that? Now we go to another Quran, another ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا The sun and the moon, each, each one of them, they have their circle that they are acting. And none of them, no day that you can see, a sun lives in their part, to go and enter in somebody's place. No. No, the moon will leave its territory to go to the moon, to the sun's territory. Every one of them, they work in their own system. And Allah said, 
والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم you and I when we drive they put a lane for everybody what do we do sometimes we leave our lane to get somebody's lane and what happened accident because somebody is staying in his lane now look from the day Allah created the sun and the moon they each and every one of them they act on that system of Allah and none of them leave their place to go to another every one of them know their territory and they stay in that territory based on the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu Akbar moreover let me just add another blessing another benefit of the sun you know our prayers it's also calculated based on the time. Now how do you know the Adhur and the Asr prayer? If Allah didn't create the sun and the moon, you are required to pray five times a day. And each one of them has a specific time. In the salat kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawkuta. There is a time. But how do you tell the time? Another ayah comes to explain. That the sun and the moon, they tell you what? They tell you the rotation or the time of every salah. Allah said, salah shams ila shams, when the sun started to decline. That is the time of Dhuhr and Asr. Allahu Akbar. How do you know that? Because of the cycle of the sun. Now, how do I know there is mother? Allah says, إلى غسك الليل وقرآن الفجر in the morning that even your salat you and I cannot know what time is this salat and what time is not this salat except with the circulation of the sun and the moon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said الشمس والقمر بحسبان each one of them they work based on the system of Allah subhanahu now the next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal Najm. Al Najm in Arabic means at tulua Appearance. Al Najm, it has two meanings. When you look in Mufradat al Ragib, one of the meanings of Najm means stars. Wal Najm is the Hawa. The stars, they call Najm. But the Najm here, it doesn't mean stars. In Arabic, when we say al Najm, sometimes it means star and sometimes it means every plant that does not have a stem or branches is called a Najm. Because you know the plants are two types. Certain, pl certain plants, when you plant them, they don't grow so as a tree. To give you the branches, they just grow all the way on the ground and they don't have any branches or stem or any one of that. For example, like watermelon. They, are not, they don't grow as a tree for you to see the branches and all that. This in Arabic is called a Najm. And then there are other trees which grow as a tree. They're called a Shajar. Allah said, Wa Najmu Wa Shajaru Yasjudan. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said those little trees, plants that you see, plus the bigger trees that you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, Judan. And look at the term, yes, Judan, meaning sigatul mudara, wa yufidul istimrar, meaning it's not one time or two times, meaning they do sujood on continuous, on continuous. Allahu Akbar. You and I, we think that we are the only one who do sujood. And we complain because we do it five times a day. And we think it's too much. Right? Now let me tell you, in the Quran, Allah said, you are not the only one who does sujood. Everything does sujood. So you don't feel good for yourself. Because we think that, mashallah, look at me. I do five times prayer. Six the ten in every rak'ah. Now Allah tells you in the Quran that everything that exists, Allah said they do sujood. وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Everything that exists in the heavens and the earth, they all do sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, maybe you think, okay, I do tasbih, they don't, they do tasbih too. Maybe you think that, no, I do salat, they don't do salat. Allah said they do salat in the Quran. I said, Kullun alima salatahu wa tasbiha. 
You go, even the monkeys that you see, they do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. In the Quran, Allah told the mountains, Ya Jibal, awwibi ma'ahu wa tayr. Ta'wib means tawfiq. Muwafaqa. Meaning, make sure that your tasbih matches the tasbih of your Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. Animals, they do tasbih too. Allahu Akbar. Everything that such the pillars of Allah. Now about the tasbih in Surah At-Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, everything that you see, Allah said they do tasbih and they glorify Allah. But the difference is that you and I cannot hear their tasbih. Animals, they talk to each other, but we cannot hear them. If you are to be given that power, you will hear them. Like Sulaiman alayhi salam in Surah Al-Naml, he said, Ullimna man We were taught to know how the animals speak. So they speak to, they speak to the Prophet you, Sulaiman alayhi salam. That hood hood when he came, he talked to Sulaiman alayhi salam. Because we cannot understand but every creature that you see, Allah said that they do tasbih and they do salat and they do sajda. But you know, brothers and sisters, the sajda is the best ibadah in Islam. Every ibadah that you do is nowhere close to sajda of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the best of the actions that you can do to Allah, for Allah. That is why you see, a salat, there is a lot of action we do. One of them is Qara'a. One of them is Ruku. One of them is Tashawul, Taslim. But a masjid is not called any other name except Masjid. From the word Sajda. Meaning, Makan Sujood. But there's no name that we, we don't call a masjid any other name part of the action that we do in Salah. We don't call it Makra because we, we read Quran in the Salah. No, but it's called Masjid because of the importance of Sajda. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you want to show your obedience to Allah, the best way to show Allah is through sajda. And that's why when Allah created Adam alayhi salam, what did he say? He said, after I finish creating Adam alayhi salam, and I blow my love in him, he said, فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ You want to show respect, obedience to Allah, and to Adam alayhi salam, the best way to show it, Allah said, is to by doing sajda to Adam alayhi salam. Not only that, a sajda also is so important that if you want to thank Allah the most, the best way to thank Allah is sajda. You know Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi afdhu alayhi salatu wa salam? Allahumma salam. One day he made another to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of the companions. And he said to Allah, Ya Allah, if you give me this, I will thank you in a way that you will be pleased the most. After a few days, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq called his companion and he told them, I have been granted my number, my wish, I've been granted. And I want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The companions, they thought Imam is going to read one hour dua. They thought Imam is going to read something from the Quran. Immediately, Imam went to sajda and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said to the companions, he said, this is the best way to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why when you go to Mafatih al-Jinan, one of the taqibat al-Fajr, after you finish Salat al-Fajr, is mustahab. To go to the sajda and say to Allah, Shukran, shukran, shukran. And such thing. How many times? Preferable 100 times. <coughs> if you cannot, they say at least three times. And not only that, even after every salat is mustahab to do such thing. 
امام حسین علیہ السلام When we go to the sajda, it's like somebody's chasing us. We want to quickly get out. Huh? But in the sajda, it's the best place to be. And one hadith said, Aqrabu ma yakunu la'abdu ila Allah wa huwa sajid. The best place that you can become closer to Allah is when you're in the state of sajda. When you're in the sajda, I say you are very close to Allah more than anything. And that is why in the sajda is the best time to ask Allah. If you have any needs, you want to ask Allah. Qunud is one of the ways to ask Allah. But in the sajda, it's much even better because you are then close to Allah more than when you are in the qunud. And there are three states, three state stages that you are close to Allah. One is when you are in the qunud. One is when you are in the state of Ruku. One is when you are in the state of Sajda. And you see all these three stages? Allah asked Maryam السلام, in the Quran, Ya Maryam Uqnuti, Warqai, Ah, Wasjudi. Allahu Akbar. Three stages. Waknuti, Warqai, Wasjudi. Because this is the three important stages that you get to talk and communicate to Allah and to be close to Allah. But the third one is the best of all the three. <coughs> when you are in the state of sajda, it's the best situation at all to ask Allah any need. Now this sajda is two kinds. There's one is called a sajda ikhtiyari and sajda tashkhiri. That's one. Or some scholars call a sajda tashri'i and sajda takwini. Such the ikhtiyari. There are certain creatures and certain creatures. They perform sajda of Allah willingly. And those are only two creatures. And those are al insan wal jinn. We can only offer this sajda willingly. And we can deny to do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the other creatures. They are tashkhiri, or they are called taqwini. They always are asked to bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they do. And listen to one of the Quran. These two, Allah mentioned in the Quran, where he said, وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرَهَا طَوْعًا means tashkhiri, it means tashri'i. Those who do such the willingly. Aw karaha means tashkhiri, meaning those who were asked to do sajda to Allah without any other choice. And those are like angels. Some of them Allah created them in the form of sajda, and they stay in the form of sajda for good. Some of them Allah created them in the form of ruku, and they stay in that position for good. And guess what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Wala yas'amun. They don't get tired. They don't complain like you and I. You know, the Salat is too much. Salat Jafar al-Tayyar, cha'udhu billah. This Salat, it takes too much time. Right? Because we complain. But Allah Akbar, we don't complain when we sit in front of TV to watch four, five hour episodes. We have time for this. But for Salat to talk to Allah, oh my, that's too much. You need to be holiday, so in order to do those Salat. You need to be on vacation to do that. Well, not the days that you're working. And brothers, you know the importance of sajda? One of the importance of sajda. A sajda gives you the courage and makes you a stronger servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, we all read this surah. 
the companions of Pharaoh, Allah. Those magicians, when Pharaoh brought them first, when they came, what did they say? Inna lana la ajran in kunna nahnul ghalibin. They were asking Pharaoh, if we win this battle with Musa and Harun, are we going to be, are we, do we have any gift? One word Pharaoh answered, he said, Inna kum min al you are one of the closest ones. Now what happened? Those companions who were loyal and scared of Musa, of Pharaoh, after they came and they started. And Musa alayhi salam threw his, his, his stick that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, told him, Alqi asaq. Talqa fuma sana'u. And it did. You know those magicians, when they saw this miracle of Musa alayhi salam, you know what they did? They realized that this is not the magic. Now after they realized this, you know what they did? Kharru lahu sujjada. Allahu Akbar. Immediately they went to sujjada. Now look at them. Before the sajda and after sajda, before the sajda, they wanted to be what? To be Muqarrabin of Fir'aun. But as soon as they came up from the sajda, Allahu Akbar, they are completely different people. They say to Musa, they say to Fir'aun, we are now Amanna, the Rabbi Musa wa Harun. Amantu Allahu kabla ala adan alukum. Innahu la kabirukum alladhi allamukum al-sihar. فَلَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ لَوْ قَتِّعَنَّ أَيْدِيَكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ وَلَوْ صَلِّبَنَّكُمْ عَلَى جُزُوءِ النَّخَلْ Allahu Akbar This is the threat of Pharaoh to them Now listen to their answer after the sajda What did they say? قَالُوا Quran for them لَا ضَيْرُ No harm He said you want to hunger us, car our hands and legs لَا ضَيْرُ no harm and whatever you want to do. They said, Inna, we, they said, they said, Ufasna ma antasana. Do whatever you want to do. Allah. And before, Pharaoh saved them. He brought them by force. Now they don't scared of Pharaoh a bit because now they gain the power from the sajda. A sajda is one of the things that gives you the power. Why? Because a sajda is the best ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because a sajda is to put your, the best part of your body, the most respected part of your body, which is your forehead. You put it on the least thing, which is the air, uh, to show your humility and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by doing that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the courage and the power to stand in front of the tyrant and oppressors like those magicians. That is the importance of sajda. That is the value of sajda in Islam. That the sajda makes you to become a better person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, the importance of sajda, even in namaz, in our salat, when you add something or you reduce, how do you fix your salat? If, it's the, if, if, if it is something that you can fix. Sajdata is sahu, right? Why not rakata is sahu? Why not qiraata is sahu? But when sajdata is sahu, two sajdas you have to perform in order to fix your salat. Why? Because sajda is the best action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the most. And this sajda, brothers and sisters, you are not allowed to do sajda to any being except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter how big the person might be. It doesn't matter if it's prophet or imam. As sajda lillahi wahda. Everyone has to make sajda to Allah and for Allah and no other human being. If that is the case, question. What is the position of the sajda to Adam alayhi salam the angels did? Number two, what is the answer of the sajda of Yaqub alayhi salam? In Surah Yusuf, 
when they entered and they saw Yusuf Quran said, Fakharu lahu sujada. The entire group, his father, his mother, his brothers, they all went to sajda. You see, there are two kinds of sajda. One sajda is ibadah lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That ibadah is not allowed for anybody else. The other one, which is, a, which is in the case of Yusuf and his families, that one is ihtiram. We have sajda al ibadah and then sajda lil ihtiram. If sajda for the disrespect, that is allowed in Islam. But if it's sajda al ibadah, that have to be just for Allah's part. In tafsir, they say the sajda of Yaqub salam and his and his children is not the sajda of ibadah. It's the sajda of respect to Yusuf salam. But the sajda for ibadah, it has to be for Allah subhanahu wa taala. One of the lessons that I want us to learn, brothers and sisters about the sajda. Sajda, brothers and sisters, is one of the means <coughs> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds. And some of the narrations, if a person wants Allah to forgive them from their sins, there are two ways to do it. One is to do dua, tawbah. One of the best way they recommended to do your tawbah is to talk to Allah when you are in the state of sajda, where you present your deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are in that state. If you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels shy to raise your head and you are not being forgiven. That is the importance of sajda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah he said Al-Qamaru wa al-shamsu wa al-Qamaru bi husban wa al-najmu wa al-shajaru yasjudan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you are you and I are not the only ones who do sajda to Allah Allah said the little plants that you see they are glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they also do the sajda was shajar also, and so as the tree, they also glorify and they prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, we ask you, help us to do the best ibadah for you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. ya Allah, we ask you, help us to prostrate <coughs> and be obedient to you the way you want us to be, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you day in and day out. Help us to be the true servant of yours, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you, forgive our past and help us to be the true mu'mineen of yours, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Our mu'mineen and mu'minat who are sick, give them the fastest recovery, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Our brothers and sisters who passed away, especially our brother, Shakir al Rubai, Ya Allah, we ask you to be pleased with him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ila jameel mawtaakum mawt al-mu'mineen wa al-mu'minat. رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة مع السلامة. الله مع السلامة. محمد وآل